Hello everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video for SimusStamp.com. Today I'm going to be using the stamp set included in the October 2022 card kit. This stamp set is called Sunflower Fields and I'm going to be creating four, yes, four one layer cards or nearly one layer. One of them has a little something popped up, but I'm gonna be making four cards in this one video and all of them involve ink blending. Now in the card kit, you do receive two ink pads, Citrine and Perfection. I love Perfection, but I'm gonna swap that out with a little more of a bluish green. I'm using Tropic and it almost matches that Positively Everything tool print paw up in the top corner. I thought that was kind of fun. Starting out with Tropic and I'm using an ink blending brush and I'm going to be blending from the bottom of this card base. This is a finished folded card and it is five by seven. So I'm taking that Tropic ink and I'm mostly concentrating it at the bottom of the card. I'm using very, very light pressure on my blending brush so that I can really fade out that kind of aqua green color as it goes up towards the middle. I'm now using Citrine. And I want this very bright yellow to be very soft and kind of blend into that green and then fade out before it hits the top of the card. So it's kind of combining those colors and getting more of a limey green right there where they overlap. And so after I have this yellow kind of blended out and faded out near that other another end of the card, I'm going to go back to the Tropic ink and kind of fill in that gap between the bottom of the card and where it blends up into the yellow. And this is just going to further blend everything and get it a little bit more seamless. This is a really big card and this blending is really going to stand out. So I wanted to make sure it looked really nice. I'm going to set that aside and we're going to move on to the second card base for more blending. This one's a really easy one. I'm taking some uh, post-it tape or masking paper, just you could use post-it notes, whatever. I'm just blocking off um, the top portion of the card and I'm gonna take this citrine ink and bring it in on the bottom. I just want a nice thick band of yellow going right across the front of this card. This card is five and a half by four and a quarter. And all of the white card stuck I'm using today is Nina Classic Crest uh, Solar White 110 pound cardstock. So I peeled up that masking tape and I'm going to save that tape and use it later. And I'm also going to set this card base aside because that's the last of the blending for that one. For the third card, I'm going to be doing a very similar blending technique that I did on the first card, but this time I'm starting with citrine and I'm bringing it from the top of the card and blending that down. I want it to fade out to a nice soft white. I decided to bring in the color grapefruit just to uh, intensify that yellow up there at the top edge. So I'm just bringing in a very small amount of grapefruit. I don't want it to really overwhelm the yellow. I want this card to definitely uh, feel more yellow than orange. So I'm bringing in a very conservative amount of this grapefruit color. And I'm going to kind of look at it and make sure I have a nice blending. And I, I believe I decided it needed a little more blending in that top right corner. So I'm going to add a little more blending up to that corner and then I'll be completely finished. This one is going to be a really, really simple card. Like I said, these are all one layer, except there's one little exception and we'll get to that in a minute. I blended a little more of that yellow and then we have a nice even blend. For the last card, I'm going to be using the Circle Masks stencils from Simon. And I've put my mask down and then I'm going to be using this flower right in the center of the circle. I just wanted to make sure it's in the right position for that flower. I'm going to use a little bit of tape to hold it down to my work surface. And then I'm going to be using uh, Tropic and Citrine. I'm going to start with Tropic and blend from the bottom of the circle. I'm kind of going in a little bit of a diagonal pattern. I want the color to be more uh, focused on the bottom right of the circle. And I'm going to blend that up. Then I'm going to grab the citrine color, change my blending brush, and start blending from that top left. And I'm going to have these overlap right there in the center just a little bit. 
um, for the most part, I want uh, all the color concentrated at the edge of the circle. I'm going to peel up this mask and you can see how beautiful that is underneath. So that was my fourth card base. So now we're going to move on to all of the stamping. I'm first going to work with the one that has the yellow band right across the bottom. I'm going to cover up that yellow band with that same tape that I used before. And I'm just going to wrap it around the edges of the card. That's going to keep the card closed while I work on it. And also I don't have to worry about the tape. This is one of the images from the stamp set. It has a cluster of three sunflowers with leaves and I'm going to stamp this right along that edge on the bottom of the card. I'm using VersaFine Onyx Black ink and I'm just going to stamp it uh, twice on the front of this card. The thing that's really fun about these cards today is not only are they one layer and very simple, but there is no coloring involved. Now in the card kit, there are stencils that match the very large floral image that I'll be using here in a minute. But um, if you wanted to color these with markers or watercolors or whatever, these stamps are great for that. For my cards today, I'm not doing any coloring at all. I'm just doing a little bit of ink blending. I've added my greeting right above that. And then I can just peel up that uh, masking tape and I have a finished card. Well, almost. I had a little gap of white, so I decided to take my T-square ruler. This is also from Simon, and I'm using a black marker, and I drew two lines using the ruler, and they're just a little bit apart from each other, and then I'm using my marker and coloring in the gap in between. That's because I wanted a little bit of a thicker line, but my marker was not that thick. So this is a great way to get a nice detailed accent um, just using a ruler. I'm using a, a corner chomper from We Are Memory Keepers to corner around the bottom corners. And that completes card number one. Moving on to my second card, I'm going to be using a sticky mat from Misty. And I'm going to take my card base and put it on the sticky mat off to the right side and not um, directly into the corner. Inking up the very large floral image in that same black ink and then I'm going to walk my fingertips over each section of the stamp to make sure I get a really good impression. And when I lift up the door of my misty, I have a really nice impression. It's absolutely beautiful. I love the detail on these flowers. I'm peeling back the sticky mat away from my card so it doesn't warp my card. And then I'm adding a greeting in the bottom corner. This greeting says get well soon and it just nestles in perfectly right below that stem and leaf coming out towards the corner and I'll just stamp that in that same black ink. So there is the finish card number two. So we're going to move on to the third card. It has that nice big five by seven card. I've put it on my sticky mat so that the bottom and the sides um, are exposed so that I can stamp directly on top. Now when I cleaned my stamp before I didn't realize it was still wet. So um, I thought, oh no, I've ruined my blended card, but I decided to just go ahead and stamp it anyway and see if it worked out. And lucky for me, it, sh it sh didn't have any problems at all. Like wh where the, the moisture from the wet stamp kind of transferred, it stamped right on top and it was lovely. I did have to stamp this image a couple times. It is quite large. So if you miss any spots, go ahead and just stamp it twice. And that's why it's great to use a stamp positioning tool for big stamps like this. All right, to finish off this card, I'm gonna be using a really small greeting up in the top center. And to get it positioned just right, I'm using a transparency grid sheet. And that's gonna help me find the center of the card and also make sure my greeting's on there straight. And when I close the door of my Misty, it picks up that transparency grid and then I can just remove it before I do my stamping. I'm inking up my stamp in that same black ink, which was VersaFine Onyx Black, and then I'll press that down onto my card. And I'll peel it off the sticky mat, and that completes the third card. These are coming together so, so quickly. For my last card, remember I had that uh, masked off circle? I'm stamping the flower and also this greeting here on a separate piece of white cardstock. And then I'm going to cut them out with my scissors. Now, and my first idea for this card was that the greeting would also be on uh, the white cardstock. 
but it turns out that once I got the flower on my card front, it was positioned just perfectly so that I could have the greeting stamped directly on the card base. So this card isn't exactly one layer because I am popping up that flower, but if you didn't want to do that, you could actually just stamp that flower directly over that circle as well. So here are all four cards all finished up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, you can pick up this card kit as well as the stamp set over at simonsystamp.com. And you can also subscribe to, the, to this card kit and future card kits so that you have an opportunity to snag that kit before it sells out. Thanks so much for joining me today and I'll see you guys in another video very soon.